This is a Sandy Boy Productions podcast. Welcome to the Urban Pharmacy Podcast, where we help women remove the overwhelm of living their most holistic life. This is the place to find evidence-based nutrition tactics, healthy lifestyle and wellness tips, abundance mindset, and easily implementable low-tox living strategies so you can rise up to your full potential and protect your family's health. I'm your host, Stacey Heine, certified holistic nutritionist and better living advocate. Now, let's get empowered with some simple swaps that make a big impact for optimal wellness. Welcome back to the Urban Pharmacy Podcast. Today, I have an incredible guest for you and one in which I couldn't even believe that I actually got to speak to. Her name is Dr. Laura Conover, and she is an author, holistic physician, and speaker who is internationally recognized as one of the world's leading grounding advocates. She runs a popular healthcare blog on her website, intuitionphysician.com leads online health classes in holistic medicine, has been featured as an expert protagonist in four motion pictures on the healing power of grounding, the grounded in 2013, heal for free in 2015, down to earth in 2018, and the earthing movie in 2019. And she writes a routine health column for the national organic lifestyle magazine, Mary Jane's Farm published the first children's book on the healing practice of grounding called From the Ground Up in 2012 and the first book on grounding that is written by a female physician, The Earth Prescription in May of 2022. The Earth Prescription reviews the science behind grounding and introduces a new field of medicine, which Dr. Conover calls conductive medicine. Dr. Conover believes conductive medicine is the future of medicine and will completely transform health and longevity as we know it. To find out more, head over to www.intuition-physician.com. Okay, so in this episode, as you can probably assume, we talk about the power of grounding. And if you don't know what that means, I highly suggest that you go and you watch down to earth um, or the grounded documentary or the earthing movie super powerful amazing stuff going on here and this is actually a pillar that i teach to my clients in holistic mama society it's called earth connection and it's not all about grounding uh this earth connection pillar it's not just all about grounding it's also about using you know, herbs to heal ourselves and just food as medicine, uh, really making that connection once again and honoring earth. But did you know that there's actually an electromagnetic field and everything that we touch really does have energy. And Dr. Laura is going to tell you all about that in this episode. So without further ado, Here she is. And if you love this episode, please give it a rating and review and thumbs up or a comment so that we can further help you understand all about this amazing stuff. And I want to see if you love it as well, as much as I do, because I do. All right, here she is. Dr. Laura Conover, welcome to the Urban Pharmacy Podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'm looking forward to it. So I found you on the documentary called Grounded. And my husband and I are super into this type of stuff. I teach my clients grounding the power of of earth connection. That's a pillar uh, that I teach my clients about, you know, and it just kind of falls into five pillars of holistic living that I teach. And I am so excited to pick your brain because you are the, you are the grounding expert. And I just, I don't think 
people at all understand the power of healing that can happen if they were just to connect with the earth a little bit more. And you have so many ways that we can do it. So I can't wait to ask you all of the things, but before we get into grounding earthing, can you tell me a little bit more about yourself and how in the world you got so into earthing? Yeah, for sure. So I was just totally conventional, you know, straight through college, medical school, married, um, had kids and just conventional medicine the whole way. And then I became a mom and it was really desperation that (laughs) made me put the connection about being on the earth and my child feeling better. So I, uh, I had a daughter and she had colic and cried like literally 24 seven and I could not sleep and it was miserable. And moreover, she was in pain and it was hard to watch her suffer. And I took her the conventional route, pediatrician wanted to put her on prescription medications at, you know, three days old. And, you know, or stick her in her crib and have her cried out. And I knew she wasn't just crying for attention. Like she was literally in pain. And so I just, I left with such a knot in my stomach. And I was like, I don't want to fill this prescription. This is ridiculous. The only way she would not cry um, was if I was holding her and I was outside walking and I was always barefoot because I lived in Arizona at the time. And it wasn't just being outside because, you know, in the car with the windows down or in a stroller or in a front pack where she wasn't touching my skin in any way, it just, it was, she was in pain. So I literally survived for months just being outside, holding her on my skin or putting her on the ground, you know, in our yard at the park, whatever. It's the only time she would actually relax and go to sleep and her pain would decrease and her face wouldn't be scrunched up and red, you know, and it was relief basically. And I did that for years and I had a second child, my son, Miles, and um, just did that as a, a manner of living and a way of life. And then one time I had a friend say to me, you're so grounded as a mom, you're just grounded. They'd use that term, I think, just to describe me energetically, like down to earth kind of, but something about it, I thought, that's interesting. I don't know. I had never heard of anything about grounding or earthing. And of course, in medical school, they don't say a thing, residency, mm-hmm. nothing, not one part, you know, because like you were saying, not only do most people not know, but even physicians don't know, no, most oh. healthcare practitioners don't know. So anyway, I did decide to put it into PubMed and do a literature search on the term grounding. And oh my God, like 20 at that time, there was 15, 20 years of research. And now um, I've been out of, I've been a physician for 25 more years. So it's been 40, 50 years of research. And we still very rarely hear about it, but mm-hmm. it is a medical healing modality that I had no idea I was doing with my kids. And so wow. when I decided to really embrace holistic medicine and leave that conventional world behind, um, because of my disappointment as a mom, mm-hmm. I, I, I was just like, this has to be like you said, exactly like you said, a pillar of maintaining the human body. Mm. And how in the world does grounding actually work? So I don't think that anyone can tell you that we have an absolute answer about how it works. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, electrons flow or ions or whatever it is, you know, I mean, I have my own thoughts about the human residence and the Carnegie curve and the, the earth is an electrical it pulses with DC energy. It has its own heartbeat and we're electrical. Obviously we know our brains think and our muscles move on electricity and our heartbeats on electricity and not fake man-made electricity, but this DC energy of the natural universe. So there's a lot of theories about how this interacts. So, but I only go based on medical literature and what has been shown. And so, although I can't hundred percent promise you that we've followed an electron and that's exactly why, what I can say is medically in double blind placebo-based studies, we know that it does work and I can give you results in every organ system of what it does for your health. Mm -hmm. And I can guess that it has something to do with this electrical exchange, but, um, that Mm -hmm. has not been definitive yet. Oh my gosh. It hasn't. No, not really. (laughs) We know it, it works, but not the total mechanism of action because we know if you ground long enough, your hormones shift. If you ground long enough, your brain relaxes. If you ground long enough, your heartbeat is supported. If you ground long enough, your digestion improves. If you ground long enough, your metabolism boosts. So we know like the effect on the human body, but we don't, I can't hundred percent tell you how, and that's not unusual in medicine. I don't, I can't tell you how most, you know, medications work or even supplements. Like we know the effects they have if we've studied it, but we yes. can't a hundred percent say how. Yeah. If you're being honest now, there's a lot of physicians that'll bullshit you or, you know, this is, yeah. you know, but it, no, realistically, no, we don't hundred percent know how. Right. Gosh. Okay. So can you tell me more about this DC and your theory? Like, yeah. uh, of what I feel, why yeah. you think that this is yeah. working for the human body. Yes. So I don't think it's a coincidence in the slightest bit that the planet we live in and the universe we live in is 
pulsing with natural energy. And this, what humans have labeled that this is called DC, a direct current. There is a double heartbeat of the earth and it comes pulsing naturally out and it's called the Schumann resonance and that's a DC current. And then our entire body, I don't think is a coincidence that it completely runs off of DC energy. Like, the only reason you're walking on your treadmill or I'm blinking or talking or swallowing or thinking is because it's a DC electrical impulse. So, I mean, you could hook your brain up to an EEG machine to see if you had a seizure disorder and we could look at the brain activity and that's same DC energy that's pulsing out of the earth. And in fact, it's even in the same frequency range. Your heart, you know, when we look at an EKG, everybody knows what those little EKGs look like if, you know, roll out a heart attack. That's looking at DC energy. Um, same thing with your muscles. We can tell if you've had, you know, if your muscle strength by looking at an EMG. So we know in medicine to look at how the body functions off of energy and to make sure it's healthy and to rule out disease that way. But what for some reason conventional medicine hasn't put two and two together is we can also support wellness that way. We don't have to wait to have a stroke and rule out if part of my brain's not working. I can actually support the electrical conductivity of my body. So for me, I believe this is a whole field of medicine that I don't know if it'll come together in my lifetime, but I hope it does because we use the body's electrical activity in every field of medicine, but we haven't put it all together into like one field. And I think we should, I think it should be conductive health. I think there should be a field mm. of conductive medicine where we see the body as electrical and instead of troubleshooting and fire hosing and putting out fires and damage and disease, we actually support wellness in the first place. Like with nutrition, same thing. This is like an electrical nutrition that our body needs. Um, and I just think it takes like taking one step back from looking at an EKG to saying like, wow, we live on a, a planet who has a heartbeat that literally is in the same electrical resonance as our own heartbeat. And our heart is only functioning because of this electrical impulse. So, you know, it doesn't take a, I don't think anyone super brilliant to figure out, like if I plug my cell phone in to charge it, or I have my, I'm talking to you right now on my computer and I have my laptop plugged in to charge it. Like how hard is it to think that our body actually does need some support in that way beyond breathing, beyond nutrition. And in fact, all the things we know that support our body's health, like you know, nutritional supplements or juicing or eating fresh uh, vegetables or breathing pure air or drinking purified water, all of it comes from the earth. So is it really that much of a stretch to think that there's a, also a direct connection as well? If everything we need to support our living human earth suit bodies comes from being on this planet and our bodies are electrical and the planet's electrical, like how much of a stretch is it to say that there's a direct correlation there that the planet itself touching the planet itself supports my health? It's just, I don't know why we're like right before that piece is fit in, but you know, I, I believe we are just right there. Yeah. And I've heard you say in an, in an interview, this is, this has nothing to do with like religion either. Like this is just, yeah, no, no, no. Science. Yeah. I mean, this is just I, energetic. Right. Like, I mean, like you said, it's happening with all of the elements of the earth. Like, yeah. And like you, and exactly. And I'm glad you pointed that out because sometimes people are like, turned off to it thinking, oh, it's a woo woo type, you know, when you talk right. about grounding, people think you're talking about, and, and it's an appropriate term in a different way too, like centering your energy. If you believe in meditation, if you mm -hmm. believe in spirit, you know, yeah. but you can set all that aside. Cause that is actually not what we're talking about today. We're talking about physically touching our, it's like plugging in a, in a cord. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's what we're talking about is touching our conductive skin to the conductive earth outside. And it has nothing to do with, like you said, like a, a spiritual or even a woo woo thing, because it's literally just a direct electrical connection, we can and have designed for decades now, medical studies where we can make them double blinded, meaning the person doesn't know if they're grounded or not, because we're using a ground cord mm -hmm. to test what their body is doing when they're grounded. So they don't know if the cord is actually grounded or sham grounded. So they really don't know. That's how we can do double blind medical studies to say, people who don't know whether they're grounded or not, their respiratory rate is different. Their blood pressure is different. Their EEG is different. Their EKG is different. Like we can literally, you know, their sleep is deeper. So it's not just a subjective, like you said, like, a, Ooh, I feel grounded. I feel, I think I feel better if I'm outside. No, we're talking about real medical studies that have nothing to do necessarily with spirituality. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And all right. So we don't, we don't know exactly how this phenomenon is happening, but what is it? Like what, like you said, we're touching our skin, but to the earth in some capacity, right? There's a lot of ways to ground. Absolutely. So Laura, can you tell us, I mean, the classic one is to put our bare feet on the ground. Right. Right. right? 
Yes. Brass. And that is, yeah. Does concrete, concrete yep. counts? Conductive. Yep. It does. Absolutely. There's so many different ways. And so a lot of people do get stuck on all they hear is walk barefoot. Well, first of all, there's a lot of patients, ones who could benefit from grounding the most who are not even mobile or ambulatory, or they're recovering from something, or they're in a hospital, or they're in a rehab center, or that they have, you know, they're in a wheelchair or whatever. And it's not as so easy, or you live in somewhere super cold or super hot, or there's fire ants or pesticides. It's your urban area. And you, it's not so easy to just go barefoot. It's not even safe. Sometimes, you know, there's glass, on, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I actually always prefer using my hands and mm -hmm. there's so many conductive surfaces of, of the body. And because it's as simple as just touch or plugging in a cord, it's really, you just want to make sure the earth surface you're touching is conductive. So that's like you said, grass, but any plant, a grass is just a little mini plant. So mm -hmm. it could be the tallest tree. I have patients who are on a balcony who can touch a leaf on a tree that's growing from the ground. They're not anywhere near the ground, mm -hmm. but just touching a leaf on a tree grounds them as if they are, because it's the direct contact with something growing out of the earth. That's conductive. You can ground, like you said, through concrete, cement, um, brick pavers, gravel, sidewalk, a metal pole I've tested with my ground test meter. If you're, you know, even in an urban setting, first of all, the sidewalk is grounded, but also so is all the metal poles that are anchored in the sidewalk. So if you're just crossing on a crosswalk and you touch, you know, the little pole that you touch to, to push the button, it's grounded. So you can ground so many different ways without bare feet. And you can also ground so many different ways without even exposing your skin to the elements outside. So like a metal pole is a hiking stick, wearing conductive gloves, putting a sticker that's grounding, um, that puts a conductive pathway on your shoes. So you can even safely wear shoes and still get grounded. I mean, so, so many ways. Mm. And lots of earth surfaces are grounded, not just plants, but um, every body of water that's on the earth is grounded. Mm -hmm. um, so whether it's a puddle or the ocean, if you just touch it with a fingertip, you know, if you were up off the earth uh, in a boat and totally not touching anything and just put one little fingertip in the water, your entire body is grounded as if you were swimming in the water because that's how conductive we are and that's how powerful the earth is. So it just takes one cell of contact and there's a lot of different ways you can do it. What does science show us the duration is like, what do we need? How long do we need for benefits to start showing? Okay, that is the most awesome question because how long you need for benefits to start showing is literally a second. It's instantaneous. So if we were looking at your muscle tension and you touch the earth, it drops. And we can see that on an EMG. It's that's, it's like, since it's electrical, it's like turning a light switch on to a room. You're in the dark room. You turn the light switch on. You don't have to wait for the light to travel to the other corner of the room. It's the light, the room is lit. That's your body. So there are multiple ways that there's immediate results. And one is through your muscles. And another one is through your brain. There's immediate shift in your brainwave patterns where you become more relaxed your muscle tension decreases. So if you're about to have a tension headache, you might notice immediate effects and your cardiovascular system has immediate effects. Your circulation starts to immediately be boosted. But uh, that said, the longer you do it, the benefits accumulate. So then when you're talking about, you want to have improved health in your body, not just feel better in this moment, which is instantaneous, mm -hmm. but you want to have prolonged health. You want your cardiovascular system to actually be healthier, your blood pressure to regulate over time, your metabolism to get boosted, your sleep to get deeper, things that take longer, then you want to do it every single day and for as long as possible. And there's no time too long. Like before we invented plastic, we were never ungrounded. So it's not like you couldn't be grounded 24 seven, but it's not realistic for most of us, including myself. And I'm totally invested in this healing modality and I'm not grounded 24 seven. So what I have found working with patients is you do want a minimum of 15 minutes a day. Mm -hmm. If you want to have benefits, even when you're not grounded every day at least 15 minutes. But I never say you have to do it that long because again, like if I feel kind of nauseous or I have a headache, I can go and touch a, a tree and immediately start to feel better. So there is immediate benefit, but again, they accrue over time. So you want to try and shoot for 15 minutes at least a day. Mm -hmm. So there is a little bit too this tree hugging thing. Yes, for sure. <laughs> there absolutely is. Yes, and, there is. and like, so, you know, these studies, Laura, about people gardening, um, and having, you know, better gut microbiomes. Do you yep. think it's a culmination of the transfer of the bacteria plus the yes. energetic component? Yes. So, so the medical studies I reference and that I have listed on my um, website are just doing double blinded, like, you know, real medical studies. So those have to be 
taking out everything else. So they are indoors usually and using a grounding mat and a grounding cord so that we know that the benefits are specifically just the connection to the earth. Mm -hmm, But exactly like you said, we haven't even begun to then layer on all the benefits if you actually go outside and do it the real way. So yeah, oh my God, vitamin D from the sun. And like you said, the plant, you know, the microbiota in the soil and in the plants and the plant pheromones and the essential oils and the ions and the little, you know, forever. Additional benefit like you, I'm sure no, um, and have probably already spoken about how just seeing greenery provides clinical benefit to the human body and health. They've done medical studies where just being able to see a plant out through a window, you get out of the ICU faster and you use less pain meds. So like, yeah, there's so much benefit on top of it, but I don't want anyone to think that the benefit we see is just because they're outside and maybe it's actually the sunshine. You know what I mean? Because the medical studies are distilling it down to a ground cord. So the medical studies are definitely legit on just grounding, but heck yeah, if you go outside, you're just going to layer on about 50 other benefits and more. Before we get too far into this episode, I want to just remind you of the fact that on this podcast, you hear a lot about reducing our toxins in terms of our food and how to prevent cancer through nutrition and all of the things that really can lead to chronic illness. But what you might not be thinking a lot about is what you put on your skin on a daily basis. And that is why seven years ago, I linked arms with a B Corporation called Beauty Counter, which is the pioneer in clean beauty. And we not only create high performing, significantly safer products, but also advocate on Capitol Hill nationwide and even in parliament in Canada to help get more health protective laws passed so that one day all products on the shelf will be safe. And what you may not know is that it's been over 80 years since the federal law has been passed to protect consumers, both in America and in Canada. They have a lot higher standards in Canada, but it's been over 80 years in in America since we have actually put really stringent health protective laws on our personal care products. That includes body products, that includes makeup, your hair stuff, all the things that we're exposed to on a daily basis that we could easily swap out for safer. And right now, only 10% of American products have been tested for human health safety. And what we do know is that there are ingredients that are allowed in our personal care products right now that are linked to cancer, allergies, endocrine disruption, obesity, and more. That is not okay. So I invite you to make a safer swap today. I really encourage you to look at the labels that you have of your current products at home. Go to the EWG app, the Environmental Working Group, and get a rating on what's going on in your personal care. You want to stay below a three if you you can at all. One of the biggest things that you can avoid is fragrance. That is a code word for over 3,500 chemicals that could be hiding in your personal care that are known to cause human health issues. So again, I invite you, make the switch, go to mybetterbeauty.com and shop for your new lipstick, shop for a clean foundation, shop for a nice and high performing body lotion that isn't going to cause you human health issues down the road. When it comes to environmental toxins, these things can accumulate in our fat tissues and within our cells. And we want to just reduce our exposure whenever we can. Switching to Safer Beauty is one of the easiest things that you can do. So again, go to mybetterbeauty.com or click below in the show notes to open up your whole new world of low-tox living and remove the overwhelm and make sure that you find brands that you can trust, just like Beauty Counter. If you need any help, I'm here as always to help you along your holistic living journey. All right, back to the show. Okay. So for those people that want to ground and they want to experience the benefits, which we're going to talk a little bit more deeply about in terms of healing, um, how do they do it inside? Because you're the guru on this and you have all the things and (laughs) I feel like we need to dive deep into this. I need to know all the things that you, that you offer and that you have manifested through all of the work that you've done and through the movies that you've been in, et cetera. Where do we start if we want to start grounding inside? Okay. That's an awesome question too. So I do still think that even if you ground inside, you should try and go outside to get grounded because of all the additional benefits like Mm -hmm. we were just talking about. 
But I, as a physician, when I really realized grounding is real and there's all these studies and I start working with it with my own family, but then with patients and I start really seeing actual clinical results, then I start feeling like we do need indoor grounding tools because there are like, a, like we talked about, there's people who are immobile or people who really, you know, they're, they're not feeling well and they're in bed. So how, you know, you can't just assume everyone can go outside and take half a day to go to the beach. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's just not realistic. So I started trying to find grounding tools to give as resources to my patients. And all of them that I found are plastic based, you know, that are just going to sit in the landfill for 500 years. They're very uneco-friendly and some of them not even ethically made. So I was like, I couldn't find anything I wanted my patients to actually use Mm -hmm. because to me, if you're reaching for the earth for healing, it doesn't make sense to be toxic towards it. And I don't want to have anything that's toxic on my body. A lot of them are, you know, PVC plastic leatherette, which is just fake vinyl you know, Mm -hmm. and just crappily made. And a lot of them, they even say on the label, it'll degrade with your natural body oil. So you got to replace it every couple of months. Well, how's that eco friendly? You know, it's not. So I um, decided I'm going to start making my own indoor grounding tools. And so I have seamstresses that use all natural materials, organic materials, whenever possible that are eco ethically made. So there's everything you can think of. And I'm still trying to invent more. So if anybody has ideas, just you know, <laughs> email them to me. That'd be great. But so far I have eco-ethically handcrafted wristbands. So if you're at work and you want to just put it on your wrist or ankle, um, mats that you can put under your feet or sit on, um, bed rolls and mattress toppers that you can put on your bed if you want to sleep grounded, blankets if you want to have a throw on your sofa and you're watching TV or reading a book and you want to just throw that over your lap. Um, I have my favorite is a hot water bottle that you can put because that typically you really want to reach for grounding when you're not feeling well. So if they have a stomach upset or someone has cramps or they're recovering from an injury and they want to put, I also have ice packs that you can ground, but um, a hot water bottle that, so you can ground in the winter all curled up with some source of warmth, lots of different ways. And then I've gone, I really do want to get people ultimately outside as well. So lots of ways to ground outside, including stickers you can put on your shoe to make a conductive, um, path from the underneath of your shoe where it's touching the earth inside to where your actual foot is so that your shoe is no longer cutting you off. Um, Conductive gloves. So you can still go outside and touch things without exposing your skin, conductive hiking sticks, lots and lots of different things. Mm. How in the world would a bracelet be grounded? Like, does it have a cord to it? Yes. Yes. Okay. So yes, exactly. So that's why I explain that explain how things need to be grounded. Like Sure. Just like electric. I mean, yeah, this is electricity people. This right. is what we're talking about. Yes. And Not- so you do need to have an actual pathway. And like you have pointed out really, really well, which I appreciate. It's not just a, you know, just a concept of feeling grounded. So like, unfortunately, a lot of people are very disappointed when they, they want to hold a rock or they want to touch a plant that's inside. Unless that plant is actually connected to the earth in some way, which you can, mm-hmm. you can ground your potted plants inside with a gr- a plant grounder, which I have as well, but it has to, it can't, it's not just theoretically grounded because it came from the earth, you know, a cup of water that's removed from the earth is no longer grounded. Just like our conductive human bodies, when we're inside, we're no longer grounded. So we do have to have an actual pathway where we are electrically connected, just like, you know, plugging something into uh, an electrical outlet, if you're talking about fake man-made AC energy, but we're talking about natural earth energy. So there is something called a ground cord and Homes are grounded They're you to code. They have to be grounded. So your refrigerator is grounded. Your hot water heater is grounded. And, it, and it's so ridiculous because we have codes in, in our country to protect these major electrical appliances and make them grounded, but not healthcare practitioners telling us to ground our bodies. So yeah. it's ridiculous that all homes and buildings are grounded, but not for us, but we can still use that pathway. So the third prong in an outlet, the little circular hole, that's not the two electrical slits, but the circular hole, that is the grounding port that grounds major appliances. And we can use that to ground our body. And then if you are in an older home where that wasn't code when it was built, or it just bothers you, which I mean, I think if we can skip the home wiring altogether, it's better if possible. You can also just run a ground cord out through a window, shut and lock the window right on it. I have like 40 foot long ground cords and then a ground stake that you can put directly in the earth outside if you don't want to go through your home's wiring. But honestly, all the medical studies are using the grounding ports in electrical outlets. So we do know there's health benefits, even if you just plug it into the outlet, into the grounded port. So yes, so the wristband, so it is kind of annoying. If you're doing something that's attached to your body, like the wristband, there is a cord to it. It's Mm -hmm. kind of annoying, but the health benefits, I think, make it worth it. But that's kind of why most people probably prefer to sleep grounded because, I mean, if you're going to, it's probably the only place we're just 
sedentary for hours, right? So you might as well make that time where you're docked to the earth and grounded. You might as well make that your docking station. And then that way you can ground the surface of your bed with like a mattress panel or grounded bed roll or, or whatever device you choose a mat. And then you tuck the cord under your ma- under your mattress so it's out of the way and it's not touching your body. So now you're laying directly on something grounded as if you were laying on the beach and mm-hmm. you don't have to have a cord to your body at all. Mm-hmm. So sleeping grounded, honestly, is probably the most realistic way to make that a habit for a lifetime mm-hmm. without having to worry about a cord on you. Yeah, yeah. My husband and I definitely started started looking at the at the things for the bed. They're, they even make like grounding pillows and all the things, yeah. you guys. Yeah crazy. Once you start opening up, I mean, there's grounding shoes. Do you sell grounding shoes? So uh, again, with my eco friendly kind of mind frame, I'm trying to get away from everyone has to go buy another pair of shoes that are plastic. So I have stickers. That's way to to me. I mean, it's still the sticker is probably not going to buy a degree for a while because it is a plastic and electrical like carbon conduit, but a teeny tiny little thin sticker compared to buying a whole nother pair of shoes, Mm -hmm. a lot more accessible financially to people. And then a lot of people need, again, also as a physician thinking about people who need orthotics or they're trying to protect their foot and they had an injury or they had surgery or they, whatever. So, um, it's a lot, I think not only more eco-friendly, but more reasonable to have people just put a sticker on the shoes that they already own. Yeah. Yeah. But yes, there are. And, and I, I do blog about them on my blog. I'm not like trying to take I mean, if you want to buy a pair of grounding flip-flops or grounding shoes, absolutely. And they are out there. And there's a couple of fantastic companies if you want me to like mention their names so people can look them up. But just personally sure. on my website, I carry the sticker for your shoe. So that way it's just less bulk, less waste. Yeah, sure. Go ahead and tell tell a few brands. Okay. So um, Harmony 783 makes a fantastic hiking shoe. If that's what you're looking for, they're lace-up hikers. They okay. make other shoes too, but if I tell people when they want to go hiking and be grounded, either my hiking stick or those hiking shoes or both, um, Raum, which I don't know if I'm even saying that out loud, right. But it's R a U M. They make fantastic. Those are eco ethically produced handcrafted, um, loafers. So if you want to slip on shoe, I always tell people to look at those. Okay. Then there's a company called grounds G R O U N D Z. So the end is a Z grounds mm-hmm. and they make great sneakers. So cool. if you want a running shoe, I would say go to grounds. Cool. And just to be clear for those who are listening, if you were to buy a pair of grounding shoes, it doesn't mean that you're going to be grounded on the inside of your house. It just True. means that you can go outside without having to be bare feet True. and you can ground yourself with these shoes on. Perfect. True. But, you know, remembering that sidewalks, really the only thing outside that's not conductive is asphalt because we've put that plastic black tar on it um, yeah. or anything plastic. So if you're on, you know, I guess like a, or actually any wood that's no longer conducted because it's dried out. So lumber. So if you're up on a deck or you're up on dried wood or on plastic, you're not going to be grounded. But other than that, pretty much everything you can think of that you walk on, even in a city is grounded. Mm -hmm. Fabulous. Okay. So what are we seeing happen to people when they get grounded? I mean, in the video, in the movie that I saw, like people in wheelchairs were like healing. Like, yeah. I mean, let's start with like, what do you see the biggest transformation be for people? Like, is it just like basically overall stress reduction or, um, what's like, what's the most common benefit of grounding? So, uh, I think the thing that surprises people the most is that because you said there is stress reduction, literally measurably your cortisol levels actually do decrease if you've grounded over time. So people don't expect that their anxiety and depression and mood disorders and their circadian rhythm, their sense of disconnect, their sense of like, you know, society messes up day and night, all, you know, the fluorescent lighting and the devices we're on. We just, none of us really feel that we're oriented to this earth anymore. So I think that's the biggest thing that I see and that I hear is that, oh my God, I feel like I'm a living human being again on this planet. And I, I feel like I go to sleep at night and I wake up with energy. And so their their life is more oriented and they feel like themselves. So that's there's real reasons for that because the cortisol is going down. Your circadian rhythm is better. Your sleep is uh, repairing. Your hormone levels are balancing, that kind of thing. But that's the biggest transformation. Mm-hmm. But um, clinically, I would say, the first thing that is really of benefit is your whole circulatory system. So your blood is flowing to every single organ system better, bringing more nutrition, more oxygen, everything is improved. So there's really no organ system that's not electrical. And there's really no organ system that can't improve from better circulation. So, you know, a lot of things coincide all of a sudden someone, you know, 
their heart, their blood pressure is improved. Um, it's hard to like dial out any one thing, their digestion is improved and just, they have hidden benefits. Their muscle strength is better. Um, People have even lost of, weight, right? Oh yeah. Because it, so since it optimizes how your body functions and it also balances your hormones, your metabolism gets a boost. So even without exercising or changing your diet, you at baseline are burning more calories. I ran an informal study with my own patients looking at that. And because I know that it takes 15 minutes a day or more to have this cumulative benefit, that's all I ask them to do. Don't change your exercise. Don't change your diet. 15 minutes touching the earth directly every single day. And on average, patients were losing about a pound a week, not changing anything else, but they're baseline metabolism was boosting their thyroid levels were getting a boost and their digestion was improving. So just by that alone, just the, the basis of how your body's function improved and they were losing weight. And I've also seen the flip side too. It seems like you just basically get optimized because if you're mm -hmm. underweight and you're struggling, um, you're recovering from cancer or chemotherapy, that kind of thing, you can actually have stability and have improved appetite and gain weight in, so that you're in a healthy zone. Wow. With grounding. So it's just basically it's an optimization and it's hard to like, it's like an take. adaptogen without having, yeah. to, having to take it. Yeah, exactly. It is it, exactly. That's right. That's some people incredible. say that it's like the best anti-inflammatory supplement better than, you know, taking Advil better than taking any kind of antioxidant you can think of is, is literally the earth because it neutralizes all of this oxidative damage that we're doing to our body every day. Wow. And electrical damage, it neutralizes this, you know, information I'm getting from these fake sources of light in my devices and, and things right. like that. It's a balance. So it is, it's a great neutralizer. So 15 minutes a day, we know now, how long does it take to see these cumulative effects happen a week? I mean, we, yeah. we know instantaneously, we know yeah, that there right. is an acute response right yeah. away. If we touch a tree or put our feet down, but over time, like what could people expect, yeah. especially if they're trying to heal their gut or if they yeah. are trying to lose weight, like right. how are, when are they going to start feeling better? Right. So pretty quickly though, I would say in a couple of weeks, um, in a couple of days, if it's something like your blood pressure, you might be able to notice that that's coming down or sleep is starting to be improved. So it can be just a couple of days, but if you want to look at, I'm going to step on a scale and I want to really see three pounds come off, et cetera. Um, I would give it a couple of weeks. I think within a month, you should really notice um, benefit. And if you're following laboratory results, so like if you're looking at total body inflammation, so you have your physician take your C-reactive protein level, go back in a month, it should be dropping slightly. If you, you know, so I would say a couple of weeks is enough to notice a clinical difference. And then of course, a couple of months, um, you have a new, a new lifestyle, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. And so as we're talking about energy and grounding and how, how the earth itself is healing us and bringing us back to quote homeostasis or just balance overall for all systems. What do you think is happening in this day and age with EMFs oh, to our fantastic. health? Yeah. It's in it's a negative exact opposite. Way. Yeah, exactly. You're exactly right. It is the, because we're conductive and every cell in our body is electrical and conductive every single part of our body is equally in the opposite way affected by man-made EMFs. And we have tons of medical studies showing in the same way, double-blinded, real medical studies showing clinical results to exposures to man-made EMFs. And it's exactly for the same exact reason that when we touch the earth, we go into a healing state. When we are bombarded by fake artificial EMFs that are not natural to living human tissues, it goes the other way. So it's basically every benefit you can think of with grounding, there is an equal and opposite negative effect with man-made EMFs. So your cortisol levels go up, your sleep is, is disrupted, your circadian rhythm is disrupted, you have anxiety, you have depression, you have decreased fertility, you gain weight, you have neuroinflammation, you have whole body inflammation, you have pain. And some people are, and I see this as a positive thing, if you're electrosensitive, some people don't feel any of those things, but they just notice the health effects and they don't know why. To me, if you're electrosensitive and you're you can really feel the small shifts in your body. First of all, you'll probably really feel relief from grounding, which is great. Mm -hmm. And also it's good to feel, you know, I wore these earbuds and I started getting a headache and I noticed that because then at least you can be aware of it and protect yourself instead of being like a frog that's cooked in a boiling pot of water and you right. don't notice anything. Right. right. So yeah, it, I, people come to me, patients come to me all the time and they're like, I can't, you know, I can't even function. I'm so electrosensitive. And I'm like, good, because you're actually aware of the damage. You're not getting more damage just because you're feeling the symptoms. Mm -hmm. Even the people who feel nothing are getting the same amount of toxic 
whole body dose. Right. But be glad you feel it. And I know it's making your life miserable, but now we can take some steps to do some shielding or even one weekend a month in nature away from your usual onslaught of EMFs have been shown to have sustained health benefits. You can go for one weekend a month and they can measure change in your cortisol levels, which shows your stress level. And even a month later, there's still an improvement. Wow. So even if you live in an urban place, if you, you know, you, there's ways that you can still improve your health, even when you're aware, because it's sometimes it's easier just to not be aware because you think there's nothing I can do, but there actually is. Mm -hmm. And so it is good to be aware. So I like when people say they're electrosensitive because now you can do something with it. Yeah. I definitely feel a tremendous shift. I mean, gardening is where I really first yeah. found the healing benefits. Um, everything about my existence is different. Um, in the summer, especially, which is, I mean, I live here in Indiana and like, it, it hasn't been cold the last few days. I'm, I, I'm definitely gonna, you're going to see me outside, you know, yeah. um, because it's incredibly healing for me. And, um, I definitely am sensitive. You can tell, like, if we have our phones charging by our bed, mm -hmm. um, you know, like these things actually matter all the little things that we do to try to reduce our exposure to EMFs can help us cumulatively, like you said, but then also just every single time we can get outside or get grounded in some capacity, it can, he it can start to help us heal. Um, how do we protect ourselves from them? Yeah. So there's like three general tracks. And if you can even do one of them, it's, it's an improvement. Like don't feel that you have to, because you can't, you can't really get away from everything. So the three ways are to eliminate as many exposures as possible. So if you literally just, um, like you said, didn't charge your phone by your bedside. And that's the only change you can do because you're going to work in a call center and you're going to go to the mall, you know what I mean? And you're driving in a, a hybrid vehicle that has a Bluetooth. One thing will make a difference because it's about your total body burden. So just one thing. So eliminating one thing. And then the second thing, if you can't, if you go through your home or your workspace and your lifestyle, you can't eliminate anything, just increasing the distance you are away from it makes a difference. So literally pushing your, putting your cell phone in your hand, as opposed to up to your head, yeah. just putting it a foot away from your body. It makes a difference. So every little thing, and I do teach a class on electrosensitivity. I'll say in case people want me to walk yeah. them through their home and their workspaces, and we go through a checklist and I even give you letters you can take to your doctor because in other countries, this is, this is an actual diagnosable illness to have electrosensitivity and the, your workspace and your school. If you have a doctor's note, they have to accommodate you. Mm -hmm. Um, so they have to give you like an ethernet plug instead of using wireless, that kind of thing, or they have yeah. to allow you to wear, put a shield in front of your, uh, traditional old phone base, which is pulsing with so much radiation. You can put like a shield in front of it. So anyway, if, if people want more information, but basically eliminating what you can, and sometimes you can't, so then increasing your distance. And then if you can't do that, or you want to go further then shielding, that's the third is mm -hmm. there are fabrics that won't allow that will decrease the strength of the Wi-Fi signals or like even if, so sometimes I do sleep with my cell phone right by my bed and on because I have two older kids that don't live at home anymore. They're in college and I want to know they made it home from a trip safe. Right. I'm not going to turn my phone off. So I, you know, put a shielding, a bedside shield. It's a shielding material that I put in a picture frame and I have these on my website and my cell phone is on the other side. So it's kind of like casting a protective shadow over me and my bed. Is it eliminating my exposures? No. But do I feel that it's worth it to know my kids got home safe? Yes. So there's things you can do, but I would say shielding is third. Yeah. Um, and so when they tried to put a, the smart meter on our house, mm -hmm. I called them and I was like, take it off because mm -hmm. I, that's just, um, that's just like you said with the, with the frogs in the boiling water, like, yeah, yeah. These, so ubiquitous it's everywhere. Yeah. And all the boosters things. they're putting and all the hidden, and this is something we go over in my class, but there's so many hidden things. I mean, I'm sure everybody's seen like the trees that are actually cell phones. Too. Yeah. 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 But, but now, unfortunately, every, um, flagpole and every, uh, the front of a hotel, the sign behind a hotel, I mean, they all have booster. I mean, it's, it is ridiculous. It's getting, ridiculous. yeah, they're everywhere. Yeah. Um, it's, it's helping us connect quicker and faster, yeah. but it's also really potentially causing yeah. us harm. And I think that, and just even, hopefully in the next decade, more will be out yes. about that. Um, so and that's that why the work that you're doing is so important because just people, even if no one can do anything about their EMFs, just being aware that we can slightly tip the scale on the exposures we get by maybe introducing grounding. So even yeah. if that's what they get out of this 
um, podcast you're doing that that's great because at least you're now neutralizing a little bit of it mm-hmm. or there's supplements that neutralize the inflammation that EMFs, um, ha- the wear and tear it does on our body. So there is a lot of different things. And I think it's fabulous that you, that you brought this into your, to your followers because, Oh, thanks. Yeah. Just tipping the, the balance a little bit can make a world of difference to your health. Because if you think about if grounding makes a difference within a second, that's how electrically sensitive we are then just tipping the balance by a little bit, taking this one supplement or going outside and gardening and having this one herb garden, or just, you know, putting a shield here for this one time while you ha- want to have your phone by your bed, like all those things make a felt difference in your body. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ooh, I have a question. So if somebody wanted to grow microgreens, like uh-huh. say they don't have, say they want to grow. Um, yeah. They are going to have to have how would they make that grounded? Like if they're, you know, yeah, easy. How, how would they do that? Because easy. they could grow it on a rack. You said easy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Me. So easy. All you have to do is ground the soil that it's in. As long as the soil is not totally dry. So if it's just got moisture, all you do is you can clip a ground cord or just push the little end of the ground cord into the soil and the entire container will be grounded. Um, I even do have plant grounding stakes. You can actually put like a little stake in and clip the cord to that, but then you can just use your home's wiring to ground it or your building's wiring. Or if you want, you can run a ground stake out through a window, but every outlet has that little grounding prong. And as long as it's grounded, you can just ground whatever container. And then of course, like if you want to do it outside, you might be able to skip that depending on if you have like a cement patio and then you can use a terracotta or a metal planter, then it will naturally be grounded because of that contact with the earth. But if you want to do it inside, just a little plant sake, just all you need is that cord and that will get so you these back cords, to that contact. These cords, we can just, you, we just get them on your website. We plug them yep. into the wall yep. and we click them to what we want to be grounded. Like exactly. that's pretty, and it's, it's pretty simple it's like that. What yeah. if the, what if the container, what if the container of microgreen is yep. in like the soil is in plastic? What if we clip the, the thing to plastic that won't work? So the plastic will never become grounded because it's not conductive, but really you probably can get away with doing that as long as the clip is touching the soil because the soil is definitely conductive. So as long as you got it touching soil or you, if it's not going deep enough, then put a little ground stake. Or honestly, if you want to do a make it yourself at home version, as long as you get the ground cord, just put a metal nail, you know, just sticking Mm -hmm. out a little screw or nail just in the soil, like a little stake and then clip it to that. Yeah, The soil is conductive. Every single plant, every cell in the plant is conductive. So you just need a little bit of moisture and the conductive elements to be in contact with each other. And it doesn't really matter what container it's in. And these grounding, I, I would just rather ground it. I'm not getting it. I've just got to get your fancy stuff because I, <laughs> I'm not an electric yeah. girl. I just don't know. Yeah. <laughs> My husband does, but uh, anyways. Okay. So I'm very excited to get all the cords, but um, okay. Let's just wrap up with two more questions because okay. I have one that I ask everybody. And then one we've, you've spoken Laura, a lot about sleep. Yeah. How is grounding helping the circadian rhythm? Oh gosh, girl, why'd you leave that to the end? That is a long, I'll try and do it. I know. Well, does this have, does this have anything to do with the sun and the energy? Like, is that like, does looking at the sun count kind of, um, the sun exposure for sure in and of itself even just sitting in a window or going on a drive and getting the sun through the window. Sun, right, but I mean, absolutely. I've heard, I've heard that like, we're supposed to be looking at the sun. Yeah. For... As a physician, I can't, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to echo <laughs> that because I do know that that can cause retinal damage if someone does it incorrectly. So I, yes, okay, and also okay. like the UV light can give you cataracts. That's mainly why people get cataracts <laughs> when they're older. So I'm not going to totally go on record as saying that, but <laughs> definitely the sun exposure, whether you're looking at it or not is helpful. But let me tell you this in a nutshell, it's also just the earth. Because there have been studies where they have put people in bunkers that are underground, shielded from the sun, and then also shielded with shielding material from the earth's energy. And the people that were in a bunker that just were in artificial light, so they they could turn the light on and off, but they had no exposure to sun, still kept a 24-hour about cycle. They were a little dysregulated. I mean, they might have a 20-hour day and then a 27-hour day, but they would wake up, turn on the light, work, turn off the light, go to sleep, and kind of still keep that internal rhythm. But the people that were in the bunker where they were shielded from the earth's energy absolutely became every single, every single patient in this study who became internally desynchronized, lost all sense of day and night, three hour day, 
70 hour day, you know, just totally desynchronized. It wow. was when they were shielded from the earth's energy. And so what we found is there are different electrical impulses from the earth that inform our body. One of them is called the Carnegie curve and it's a 24 hour rhythm. And it tells our body, no matter where we are, it's oriented to the time zone that you're in. And it's been studied all around the world. It, it orients you to day and night in a 24 hour rhythm. And it also orients you seasonally uh, because it's elliptical. So the strength changes depending on what season we are. So it tell. So there are things that we don't even cognitively think about that are the earth informs our body of our orientation in time and space on this planet. And it, so it is the sun for sure. That's helpful, but I can also confirm that it is directly the earth's energy as well. Wow. So if we want to maximize our circadian rhythm, if we have insomnia, if we don't sleep well, if we're having hormone problems, we know that if we can't lose weight, like, yeah. um, we know that sleep is so integral to this, but if we want to sleep better, we need to ground. Like this mm -hmm. is one of the, it's free. Yeah. And it's the missing element. You know how many times, cause typically people who are open to my message are already doing the juicing or the, you know, yoga mm -hmm. retreat or taking exercising and drinking purified water. And, and they're like, I still feel like crap. I still don't, I don't feel good. I still have anxiety. I still am. I'm up all night. And that's the missing piece usually, especially if you, if you feel like you've gone through and you cleaned up your diet and you, you've done everything else you can. And you're like, why do I still struggle with X, Y, Z? It is almost always the missing piece. Yeah. Wow. So healing. Oh, this yeah. is, this is amazing. Um, so out loud, can you say your, your, um, website, and then yeah. we're going to ask you the last question. Sure. Um, it's intuition physician.com. Okay. Intuition and that's where we can find all of the grounding stuff. Yes. Um, and medical studies, if people don't want to just take my word for it and they want to go in and read the medical research, I have a page dedicated to, it'll link you and you can read it yourself. Perfect. Awesome. Okay, Laura. Um, this is a question that I ask everybody and I would just love to know what your, your thoughts are on this. What does holistic living mean to you? Oh gosh. <laughs> um, I think holistic living to me, this is just off the cuff is being present for something that's real. So less distractions, less, I love TikTok, but less of that, less reality mm -hmm. TV, less friending people online, more taking this one breath, going outside and working on that one herb garden, like you recommend, um, moving your physical body, walking, breathing, just being in this actual organic moment, wearing these physical earth suits on this physical planet. That's what it means to me is being present in my body on this planet and with a wow. less artificial crap as possible. Yeah. I love it. Oh, thank you so much. Are there any You're last so thoughts that you have that you want to share? Uh, only just that you were excellent. You asked so many phenomenal questions that were really important. So I, I just oh. appreciated your interviewing skills. Oh, thanks so much. I really yeah. appreciate it, Laura. Um, we really appreciate you and all of the work that you do. And if you guys haven't gone and watched the movies that Laura's in, you need to do that. Um, I'll make sure to link those in the show notes once we get this uh, published. So thank you so much, Laura, awesome. for your time. We You're appreciate welcome. it. You're welcome. Thank you for right, having me. Well. Take care. I'm over here cheering you on because you just finished another episode of The Urban Pharmacy. For today's show notes, head on over to theurbanpharmacy.com and be sure to join us inside our private Facebook group called The Urban Pharmacy, where we share inspiration, live trainings, and holistic living tips to help you build community and the healthy lifestyle that you've always wanted. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure you hit that subscribe button and please consider leaving us a five-star review. Before we connect again on the next show, follow me on Instagram at the urban pharmacy. That's urban with an H and pharmacy with an F. And I can't wait to hear your wellness journey as we get to know each other better. You know, there's truly no better time than now to level up your life. And I am so proud of you for showing up today until next time. Be well, health crusader.